Hello Internet, my name is Patrick and this is Fringeworthy, a show where I talk to you about weird magic decks. And we're back again today talking about Standard. Tomorrow's event on MTG Arena allows you to play any card in Standard whether you own it or not. So for those of you who are combo lovers a little bit like me, I thought I'd provide you with a second combo option to follow up on the pod combo deck I talked about earlier this week. So without further ado, let's dive into how Breach Storm works in Standard. Ah uh, yes, Breach Storm. Breach Storm is an adventure-based storm deck, believe it or not. We're actually going to be using Lucky Clover, Merfolk Secret Keeper, and Rosethorn Acolyte to be able to combo off. The main idea here is, with a Lucky Clover or two in play, a Rosethorn Acolyte can get us positive amounts of mana off of a single adventure cost. The Merfolk Secret Keeper can mill ourselves for quite a bit. The main goal here is that we want to actually fill up our graveyard so we can use it with Underworld Breach. To help support this and smooth the deck out, we're running four Arboreal Grazers for some mana ramp, Opt to draw through cards and find the specific pieces we need, and Growth Spiral as a form of kind of both of those. We are running sort of self-mill package. This means we're using Emery, which will mill through a lot of cards from our deck, and we'll be able to get back any lucky clovers we need. Tamiyo's plus one also allows us to mill through until we hit Underworld Breach. That is the card you should almost always be naming with it. And it lets us get back any specific pieces that we may have lost to card discard before we resolved Tamiyo. Chemister's Insight is great because it lets us churn through our deck, dig deep, and find what we need, and also we can jumpstart it by discarding either of our adventuring cards to be able to draw two cards. Since we'll be escaping them, we'll actually not mind if they're in our graveyard or in our hand. Now on to our finishing plans. We do have a backup plan of an Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath here, but just one of them. But our main plan is to resolve an Underworld Breach. With Underworld Breach, we can actually escape cast our adventure cards. That means our Rosethorn Acolyte, we can adventure it in our graveyard. It does, however, go into exile to go on an adventure afterwards, so we can't repetitively cast it. But being able to mill ourselves for 8 or 12 should be enough that we can hit more Secret Keepers and more Acolytes to keep going positive on mana and fill our graveyard more. Eventually, we will have hit our Thassa's Oracle and have an empty deck. That's when we can cast Thassa's Oracle for escaping it from our graveyard for the victory. Now the land base for this deck is a little bit up to you. Again, I think the four fabled passages here are very key, but other than that, find whatever dual lands you can, trying to keep a balance really towards the blue and green. They are the key of the deck, but you do still need to have some red for Underworld Breach. Now, looking towards the sideboard, I've got a spare Uro, Titans of, Titan of Nature's Wrath, in my sideboard. Just makes a really great plan B if, for some reason, they've got a way to stop the breach plan. Similarly, Bone Crusher Giant, dual functions as spot removal and a clock if need be. We're also running Aethergust to deal with opponents' Uros or other pesky cards they may be casting. We're running Fry to deal with specific Planeswalkers, Mystical Dispute to fight through counter magic, and Negate to fight through even more counter magic. Control decks are a bit of a nightmare for this. Well, that about wraps up this episode of Fringeworthy. You may have noticed that I didn't include specific matchup sideboarding advice. This is because Ikoria previews are currently ongoing, or at the time of this filming, not started yet. So, with that in mind, know that Standard is going to change very soon. There may be some new cards that slot really well into this deck to make it more robust, give it a better plan B. There may be more cards you need to worry about and tinker with the sideboard. Most of the things in the sideboard are specific color hosers or plan B options, so you can really tailor that to your preference as you see fit for your local meta or for the MTG Arena meta as it evolves over the next couple weeks. So, I want to thank you all for watching, encourage you all to experiment with this sideboard if you end up playing this deck, uh, and I hope to see you when the next video comes out. Have a great day.